good morning and welcome to the Dojo Live Recap Show this Monday, June 5th, 2023. My name is Kim Lantis and joining me today is my cohort, my partner in crime, America Guerrero. How are you, Ellie? Hey, I may say hi and as well the birds. <laughs> yeah, we love it. We love bird sounds. Perfect. So last week we actually had two shows. So that's what we're going to do today on the recap. We're going to talk about those shows as a way to entice you to watch them if you haven't got to do so yet. You can always do that on our site, dojo.live. And you can also check out our YouTube channel as well. So like I said, there were two shows going on. First up was Eddie Moeller, VP of Data Science at Juvena Therapeutics. This is all, all about biology, biologic therapeutics, AI, and ML. We followed that up with Roe Gonzarski, who is the CEO of Alithian. This was all about kind of fraud protection, counterfeit of protection, and it was about combining a digital world and Web3 with a physical world. But before we dive into uh, Roy's show, let's talk about Eddie's. This was all about how can AI and machine learning accelerate the discovery of new biomedical insights with high therapeutic application potential. That's quite a mouthful, but it was a great show. What were your takeaways from Eddie and Juvena? Well, Eddie is great. His background is in data science. And I remember that his passion is applying computational and data analysis skills in the field of biology and life sciences. So he's applying those, uh, the knowledge in this company. He explained us how the advances in AI and machine learning are accelerating the discovery of biological, biological therapeutics, right? The focus mouthful, is, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the focus is on leveraging large amounts of biological data to identify patterns, associations, and insights that can lead in the development of new therapies. So it is great. Yeah. And I mean, the focus here, of course, is human therapies, and it has a lot to do with the proteins that we produce, what they all do, the mysteries. I mean, I think there's, I don't remember the exact numbers, but thousands um, of things going on within mm -hmm. our body, some of which scientists and people understand what they do, and a lot of which they don't. And so that's where the large numbers, the data science and the ability to do a lot of this analysis comes in. I really liked what he said. They step in where the biologists no longer can, right? Um, and I think it makes this really cool team. His personal story is a really great story as well, right? One of following your passion. Um, I think that he had a really good point and that was kind of becoming skilled in a domain, right? A subject matter expertise. It's not just about the data science. It's not just about the coding, but to really have a good grasp and understanding of why you're doing and what's going on behind it is a really good way for data scientists to make an even stronger impact and get ahead in their careers. So it was a really, really good show. Uh, and then on Wednesday, it was Wednesday, we followed that up with Roy Gangarski, who is the CEO of Lithian. And this was how optical AI tech is improving security and trust while linking the digital and physical worlds and without harming physical asset integrity. So not having to add anything to a physical asset like a barcode or anything. What were your takeaways from Roy's show? Well, the technology that they are utilizing is genius, right? Does that, this company Literally, security, yeah. yeah, and trust while linking the digital and physical world. So it is like a fingerprinting process that allows for the identification and uh, information for gray market products, including luxury goods, medicines, and car spars. So to prevent gray market. Yeah, actually. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So the, the resale of things that maybe have been expired or altered in some way. So this is a way to combat counterfeit. Uh, it was really kind of mind blowing. First of all, that uh, he said on the show, right, it's easy to think that counterfeits only happening in other places, but not the United mm -mm. States, right? But it happens everywhere and all across the board. I think you just mentioned pharmaceuticals. It can be anything from brake pads, right? Expired repackaged goods. And it comes down to fingerprinting that we can actually fingerprint objects, which was mind blowing. And of course, the secret in their sauce isn't to look for what's all the same on these objects. He talked about how they actually don't use machine learning. Um, mm -hmm. because, you know, a machine can identify that this is a cell phone, um, but what, it, and what it should look like and everything, but what they look for is what shouldn't perhaps be there. So I, my understanding is a lot of the times the, the small defects that happen, even microscopic levels 
uh, on um, objects is what makes that fingerprinting possible. Of course, how they're able to do that with a photo is proprietary. He wasn't going to let us in on that. But it was really interesting, too, that it's a lot of math, math geniuses and older individuals um, who kind of cracked figuratively and literally the code on this. So it's a really, really cool product. Um, the applications are, are phenomenal. Yes. And I also remember that, for example, if you're a company who didn't have this technology before and you want to protect the products that you are selling, the items, it, it doesn't matter. You can recollect that data. Yeah. It's and it's, it's really, really easy to implement with uh, pretty much all you need is a decent camera. And I think, I guess, some type of logging. And he logging system. What he even talked about is how they can take like sheet metal things that then get pressed into molds or cut into other objects and still be able to track and identify that piece. Um, so it's just spectacular, mind blowing. Check out a lithium for sure. And I think Rory also had some really great words of wisdom there at the end of the show in terms of how they're building out the company, the trust factor, the transparency factor, um, and the, the freedom to fail. But nobody, and how you react to that, right? Nobody That's not likes the goal, it. Like, right? Uh -huh. but, and, and not um, romanticizing failure, right? It, of course, wants to be prevented, but um, how to react to it. A really, really great show. Uh, so check them out, Dojo Live. This week, we've only got one show coming up. It's going to be on Thursday. Who's that with? Yes, the conversation is going to be with Dan Schmerin. He is the co-founder and president at the company Metaversal. And we mm -hmm. are going to talk about from global meltdown to quantum leap. Why token this is a difficult word. Why tokenization, tokenization. tokenization will save the world? How the reap how to reap the rewards of evolving web three technologies with the extraordinary possibilities of tokenization. Yes, for sure. Check that one out. You know, beware, beware. We've got Mo Novello and Sandra Vasquez who are actually going to be co-hosting and hosting that show because, you know, America and I got to take some days off sometimes. So we're not going to be here, but we've got you covered with some great guests. Mo and Sandra are going to take it away with Dan. Join them Thursday, 10 o'clock Pacific. And I guess that's it for now. Bye. Bye.